I'm willing to bet that you guys have noticed over the past few years that popular music has started to feel more gimmicky and even sound like nursery rhymes by counting down. Except can we all admit that this song ripped off Seven Things by Miley Cyrus? Also, yes, I'm coming down from the sickness. Ooh, oh. ah, 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 ah. <laughs> So bear with me, fucking get over it. Either way, some of you may have noticed that writing a viral song nowadays just involves picking an object or a trend and writing some pseudo clever lyrics around it. And to be honest, this has led to many nice bops, I will admit. And the gimmickiness of it doesn't take away from the talent and lyricism of the artist, but it is something that has been shifting to be a more noticeable impact in generally pop music over recent years. And pop punk, but that's uh, something Something for a different video. A lot of people think that this started with A B C D E F U, or mad at Disney. I'm mad at Disney, Disney. Or even, is it me or the PS5? But I think I can trace the origin of this phenomenon to much earlier. The reason that this shift in mainstream music is happening, in my opinion, is accredited to. But where did this all begin? Well, before TikTok, we had Musical.ly. Yes, this is a lesson in pop culture history and I'm your professor, Gabby Balls. So buckle up, buckle in, and let's get ballin'. I don't know. Anyway, let's give a quick shout out to Honey Hime. They sent me some fucking adorable ass stickers and I love them so much. This is really nice of them, so make sure to give them a follow. They have some really adorable Animal Crossing stickers. I mean, look at these, they're so cute. And they gave me little pins and everything too. So check them out on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you again for sending me these little gifts. So before TikTok, we had Musical.ly, which was known as the app that 12 year olds would try to make sped up thirst traps while lip syncing Justin Bieber. Musical.ly worked off of songs that were already popular and on the radio thanks to big labels and companies. And in my opinion, Musical.ly wasn't really big enough to have the power to make unknown songs go viral and become popular. Plus the app's core user base was just much, much younger than TikTok's and the popularity of it wasn't as widespread at all. Like by the end of May, 2017, Musical.ly had reached over 200 million users before ByteDance had acquired it and merged it into TikTok in late 2018. Compare that with over 1 billion active users on TikTok. So with TikTok making headway onto the phones of millions across the world, having it be the same music heavy and trend centered app, He's a ten, but he's still we have one of our first viral songs to hit the mainstream charts off of the app without a huge label behind it. Old Town Road by Lil Nas X featuring Billy Ray Cyrus. What started as a humble song on TikTok now makes me do a little one of these every time I play Just Dance. It's a good song. I like it. I like the dance. What are you gonna do about it? Old Town Road was such a massive success, it speculatively <laughs> caused a huge shift in the music industry. Labels then saw what an independent artist could achieve with TikTok virality, and they wanted a piece for themselves. There's only one piece here, and Luffy's gonna find it one day. I just know it. They saw the early potential that TikTok had and wanted to use it to their advantage. Not only the labels, but other independent artists were inspired by the success as well. But this is where we saw the rise of labels encouraging their artists to write songs specifically for TikTok virality, highlighting the 15 to 30 seconds that could blow up a song, make a trend, or a dance, and sometimes we see the rest of the song as whatever, who cares? <laughs> I mean, do you even remember how the verses of Astronaut in the Ocean go? I only remember the Our Last Night cover, to be honest. <laughs> Not to mention the Toozy Slide by Drake. I mean, everyone saw through that one, right? <laughs> he wrote that song just for TikTok. Although I would do anything to not hear Cha Cha Slide at another wedding, Cotton Eye Joe can stay though. 
That song's a banger. It's so prevalent that labels are putting TikTok dances into their music videos to try to initiate a, a chicken teriyaki movement or whatever. I don't know. Why are you doing that? We have even seen in recent times actual signed artists complain that their labels are making them make TikToks. And I know this just turned into a meme, but the core of it is true. These people just want to make music, not incessantly posting about their music or trying to make it a trend. That's part of the appeal to getting signed to a label. You do it. You do the marketing. <laughs> now I have to do it? I think a lot of musicians would agree with me when I say that marketing your music is the worst part of being a musician. So we're constantly coming up with new and creative ways to get music out there and heard. And when something works for one of your peers, now everyone starts jumping into that trend to try to make their music popular. That's why those methods of promoting your song on TikTok like what if there was a song? Or if you're feeling sad, this song's for you has become so cliche and cringe <sighs> because you've seen it so many times. But at some point, it is working for someone or else no one would do it. So independent artists also began to try to create their own virality for their music on the app. And don't get me wrong, just because a song blew up on TikTok doesn't make it a bad song. It's just interesting to observe how much TikTok has influenced the way that labels and independent artists promote their music alike. What if there was a song? What did they do before TikTok? I don't know. I think they were on YouTube. Justin Bieber, Charlie Puth, Shawn Mendes, to name a few. But those were the days that Cimarelli, Kurt Hugo Schneider, and Keys of Awesome, and other music and music parody channels were thriving. But of course, with the shift to prioritizing longer videos on YouTube and the rise of TikTok, all that's happened since then is a shift from musicians going to TikTok. Even when YouTube was the way to go, one of the big viral music successes off of YouTube was Grayson Chance's paparazzi cover. <laughs> We all know that musicians on TikTok and, and who want careers and it's so saturated as they'll say because everyone has access to, to be a musician now and get their music heard. And remember when you hear your parents say that, oh, that song was a one hit wonder. I feel like nowadays the music environment has changed so much that we have thousands of one hit wonders. Back then you were a one hit wonder when you've done all this work to get signed by a label. The label helps you produce a song, pushes you out onto to the radio and then evaluates how much you sell. Now you can have a one hit wonder from your bedroom. And I think that's wonderful. What's different also is that back then for someone to listen to more of your music after having a one hit wonder, they'd have to go and buy your record or buy your CD. If they can even somehow get their hands on it, depending on how small of an artist you are. Now everything's on Spotify and Apple Music and the rest of your music will just autoplay. And suddenly you've, you've gained a bunch of new fans from having one song go viral on TikTok. I think having more artists flood or saturate the market honestly isn't a bad thing. I know this is a little bit of a tangent, but I think this says something about how much TikTok has shifted the way that we listen to music in general and how we find new artists. Now, everyone gets an opportunity to have their music shared and heard, which is way more accessible for artists and consumers alike than it was even 10 years ago. But now let's get into some of the stuff that people might consider stinky. Because while the landscape is more accessible and TikTok has changed the way that music is promoted, TikTok has also changed how music is written. <laughs> we all know that songs are getting shorter and this isn't new. This isn't just because of TikTok and the attention spans and blah, 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 blah. Songs got shorter with the popularization of the radio. Most popular songs don't even have a bridge anymore. For my non-music folk, a typical early 2000s pop song would go something like this. Verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. Now, and I know this is an overgeneralization, a popular song structure is chorus, but like a little teaser, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, chorus. And while this isn't necessarily a bad change, it is telling of where the emphasis of a song is being put. Music is literally changing. I know, crazy statement. You click on a commentary video and I'm like, music be changing. 
<laughs> Groundbreaking. <laughs> the emphasis of many pop songs these days are the hook. It's the 15 to 30 seconds that we all bop our little heads to while we're working. And that's kind of obvious. The chorus or hook is the emphasis of like every pop song ever of all time and adjacent genres. But even more so these days when you're writing, we're almost writing with the hook as the purpose. Somehow more than before. Hear me out. <laughs> even Baby by Justin Bieber has a little foreplay before we get into the action. Before we get into the baby, 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 oh. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm saying. I could be totally wrong, but please tell me I'm not the only musician who's noticed this trend in songwriting. But instead of the baby, 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 ooh, now we're focusing on a line. <laughs> or a hook. <laughs> that's really memorable. He's a ten, but he's still Which is the job of a pop songwriter, but also like picking a gimmick to write from. Like Mad at Disney. <laughs> It's so clear that this was meant to be the viral moment, which is how the song popped off on TikTok. But when you actually listen to the rest of the song, it is clear as day to me that it was lazily put together after the fact. The lyrics are quite frankly just bad, and the production of the rest of the song is kind of uninspired, boring, and basic. Sometimes happy love. But this viral moment helped skyrocket Salem's career. And don't get me wrong, please, because if you listen to her other music, she's not a bad songwriter. She even had a second spotlight in TikTok fame with the PS5 song. It's me or the PS5. Which I know everyone clowns on, but I don't think it's a badly written song. It just got goofed on a little bit. I think the song is fun and cheeky, though lots of criticism to her specifically comes from many of her popular songs being centered around a gimmick, like Crypto Bro. <laughs> And the same goes for all songs written like this. And I know the gimmick thing is nothing new. I just think it's being more concentrated right now to have that little moment of, ooh, that was a good line on TikTok. Cause it's just the highlights. TikTok is you're putting, it's a highlight. You're not, you don't put the whole song on TikTok. But why do people hate that so much? You know, I think to a lot of people, the reason writing around a gimmick counting <laughs> a light switch sound effect, light switch. or a nursery rhyme feels like a song has been cheapened is because to the consumer, it starts feeling like you're songwriting to sell a product rather than to make the art that you really like. Like, are you just making this because you know that this line is gonna pop off on TikTok? Or are you writing it because you actually believe in your work? I think if we're not careful, many music artists can fall into writing for the algorithm rather than making music for the reason that they started making music. I know I'm putting the spotlight on music artists, but YouTubers and other creatives fall into this too. Creating to please an algorithm rather than to fulfill their creative needs. And of course, that's not to say that all gimmicky songs are cheap and bad. Just because a song has a gimmick in it doesn't imply that the artist is selling out or that it's poorly written. And it doesn't mean that you can't enjoy it. But it is obvious and telling when the song is poorly written just for this one moment on TikTok. I'm just being overly analytical about the implications of these things. I'm a YouTuber, this is my channel. What do you want me to do? What do you want from me? I gotta pay the bills. <laughs> the implications that it makes a song feel dumbed down, uninspired and left with no nuance to enjoy the song with. And part of that is just pop as a genre. I love pop music, but I don't know. Does it have to be this way? Does it all have to be so on the nose. I am an avid pop music enjoyer and I ask these questions. Some people just want to make cheeky music and that's fine, but it also doesn't have to be a nursery rhyme. Are you catching my drift? Wait, that's an accidental bar. Some people just want to make cheeky music and that's fine, but it doesn't have to be a nursery rhyme. Bars. Anyway, in conclusion, music be changing. Follow me on Instagram for exclusive pictures of hedgehogs. Twinkle, twinkle, little bitch. Yeah, yeah. 
how I know you are a snitch. You told mom I stole the cookies from the cookie jar. You're a rookie, cause I'm gonna beat you up in my big old pickup truck. And then I'll take the beer and, and, and put it in the clear. That's right, it's a country song right here.